Hello and uh, welcome, my name is Patrice, I'm a music mixing engineer and today in this video we will have a look at a few hints to set up the Dolby Atmos production suite uh, because there are a few things in the preferences and the way to set up the software that may be useful to you. So let's move to the, um, the screen and here. Well, basically, we first have a look to the preferences. Uh, there are a few things. I'm not coming back on the the the, um, the time code settings and uh, well everything that that has been covered in a previous video. Uh, so I'm not coming back to this screen. But uh, regarding the processing, there are a few default to change to work for music because the default setup is made f basically for uh, post-production and movie film production uh, and for music uh, the spatial coding emulation is i won't get into this now that would be a bit long but basically in order to uh, make the best possible use of the bandwidth uh, when atmos content is streamed um, what the Atmos encoding does is that it creates like group of objects. It groups objects uh, because it's considered that the human here uh, cannot precisely see the difference between two locations. Uh, so this grouping, the default setting uh, is 14, which means that it will use a maximum of 14 of this kind of meta objects and it's grouping objects that are close to each other uh, and so basically it creates up to 14 of these big objects, group of objects and it's better for music use uh, to actually use it because if you, if you, if you don't use it uh, you won't get, you won't listen to exactly what the Dolby Atmos uh, encoding and post-processing will actually do. Uh, so that's why it is advised uh, to do it. Of course, you can simply turn it off and then you don't have this and the objects will really be located exactly where you put them. Uh, but it's quite obvious that most of the time that no one will ever listen to your master, your Atmos master directly, basically the public will listen to streamed content or to modified content, to encoded content whatsoever. Uh, so that's why it's better to directly listen with that, but to set it to 16 objects for um, music. Output limiting uh, is, well, as it says, um, I personally I rather have it on uh, but well this is really uh, up to you the important thing is that should be on 16 and not leave it on 14. Uh, the speaker processing of course if you do have speakers if you work with headphones you won't need that but if you do use actual speakers uh, you will need it and uh, the bass management is uh, you know the way that the, the processing will cut low frequencies from the, the, the main speakers to send it to the low frequency enhancement, to the sub, uh, but uh, you can turn it off by selecting it's off by default, so you can leave it to off um, if you don't need it. Headphones. If you're working of, uh, on headphones, of course, you will set that in the main, uh, in the main preference uh, window. But if you're using speakers and you want to have a listen through headphones at the same time, which is what I'm doing personally, uh, then you need to enable headphone processing. And then you have the choice between listening with your headphones in stereo or binaural. Uh, please, uh, of course, sometimes you can be tempted to turn that off if you don't need a headphones or if uh, the your computer if everything is running on the same computer uh, your computer may be uh, low on cpu and then if you turn that off that that will uh, especially if you're binaural uh, it will use less cpu so that's why you can possibly turn it off if you don't need it so re-rendering 
is the way the Dolby Atmos software will generate uh, stems on like 5.1, stereo, 2.1, 7.1, whatever. You need to listen live. It's, it's doing this live. It, turning this off will not prevent you from uh, generating uh, the, the re-rendering those uh, multi-channel files if you need afterwards offline but if you for some reason if you need them live is the only reason why you should have turned this on uh, but basically you won't need it and then again turning this off will save precious uh, CPU cycles loudness is the loudness measurement uh, i would advise to have it on you see it's that's uh, this uh, this part of the screen um, here so it's best to uh, leave it on but then again if you need to save some cpu cycles but uh, that's it so and the remote clients is just the list of clients connected to this particular renderer and of course since we're local host um, these are uh, i have a mac pro uh, trash can so it has two um, ethernet interfaces so that's why there are two addresses here um, and uh, this one happens to be when you're using basically audio over ip or many things over ip i would suggest that you set your computer and network with uh, fixed ip addresses uh, rather than the hcp um, i've noticed uh, quite an improvement especially this is not related to Dolby or Atmos but if you're using a Yukon controller I do have an Avid Artist Control um, and I've noticed that it behaves much 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 more smoothly since I've assigned it to a fixed IP address and my Macintosh also has a fixed IP address uh, I've noticed a serious improvement over that so that's for the preferences settings. Uh, then there is just one more thing. If in your room setup and in the monitoring tab, you have created um, um, various listening environment. This is, these are not re-rendering. This just for listening, you know, when, you're, when you have here, this menu here, uh, by default it's on physical because that means that you are listening through the physical speakers that you have in your room uh, and in my case it's, it's 7.1.4 uh, but you can simulate what it would do to listen to it in 5.17 that's what I design or in stereo I use this one uh, quite a lot to check my mix in stereo and um, in, in live uh, listening conditions and so in the in the room setup if you have uh, created some of that and i'm taking this opportunity if someone at dolby ever sees this video and my little finger tells me that you might do uh, please could you find a way to just reorder this by drag and drop because if i want this 2.0 to be at the top of the list uh, then I have to delete these three ones and uh, then recreate it again. Uh, that would be much simpler if I could just drag and drop the order here. Uh, thank you, Mrs. or Mr. Dolby, if you could do that for us. Uh, well, anyway, if you've set this up here, uh, and especially 5.1 and 2.0 or 2.1 settings, and you want to listen into that, and that will also uh, have an impact on your exporting uh, this stereo or 5.1, um, files you have to change one thing in the trim and down mix controls because by default uh, this is set when you select here 5.1 and 2.0 uh, by default this is on automatic and on automatic then again it's been designed for post-production used not for music use and in automatic as you can see then the the surround speakers will be trimmed down by 3 dbs and the height speakers will also be trimmed down by 3 dbs and this is not what we want in music and in music when stereo audio is um, down mixed or generated uh, we want that to be to uh, 0 db so you have to set them both at 0 db and i suggest that's from time to time 
uh, you check this setting quite often because I have noticed, then again, Mrs. or Mr. Dolby, watch this, I have noticed that sometimes uh, when you create a new master or after opening another one, opening a recent master file or uh, creating a new master file, sometimes this gets reset to the default setting. So this is uh, why I suggest that regularly and especially before printing your final mix, just make sure uh, to check this uh, and to have it on manual and set at 0 dB for 5.1. Uh, and the other ones, I've left them to, uh, to automatic. That might not be a good idea, but basically we're in music here and the really important thing is the stereo uh, version, of course. So because 7.1 or 5.1.2 won't be uh, that much needed uh, in music use. So make sure that this is manual zero dB. Uh, this you can leave it to the default, uh, that's what I've noticed from uh, the Dolby recommendations that they left it on, on this setting, but this one definitely make sure it's all right. Well, that's uh, all I had to say for today. So I'm still in the process of thinking to make a live um, a streaming uh, for mixing a song in Dolby Atmos. I've not done it yet because actually to be fully transparent with you I'm having some difficulties with the audio to video synchronization in OBS studio uh, because that's one computer uh, doing everything the the mix in Reaper the Dolby Atmos rendering uh, the capture in OBS and the streaming at the same time so um, all this is quite confusing the, the computer and I, I haven't managed really to, to have a satisfying uh, audio and video sync uh, so uh, that I'm still in the process of figuring this out but that will come eventually uh, so uh, if you want to be informed when that happened I suggest that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already and click the bell in order to be notified when uh, such event happens and when I release further videos. Well, thank you very much for watching and speak to you soon. Bye.